Yesterday, I told you about a funny scene in our first reading about the prophet Daniel reconstructing the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar and then interpreting it. Today, we have another funny story from the same book of Daniel, this time about Belshazzar, the spoiled brat, the spoiled son of the former tyrant, Nebuchadnezzar. This spoiled brat is behaving like he has totally forgotten the many bad things that his tyrant father had done to the Israelite people when he was still the king of Babylon. It was his father who plundered. It was his father who plundered the Israelite nation. It was his father who destroyed the temple of Jerusalem. It was his father who stole the treasures of the country. Of course, through the passing of time, after his father had died already, Belshazzar, the spoiled brat, probably thought that the crimes that his father had committed had been forgotten already. Nagkamali siya. He was wrong. The Israelite people may have forgotten, but not God. God remembers. And so, one day, according to the story, Belshazzar took out all the precious silver and the golden vessels that his father had stolen. And he organized a party. Nagisplurred siya on whining and dining using the sacred vessels of the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. He flaunted his wealth and his family's loot with absolutely no qualms of conscience. The writer says, they also did this while worshipping their gods made of gold and silver and other precious metals and stones that had also been stolen by the Father. You know, this situation is supposed to be nakakatakot, scary. But the writer is able to make it sound really funny by infusing a lot of humor to his storytelling. Ito ang kwento niya. He tells us that while they were whining and dining, abay biglang lumitaw ang isang kamay. Kamay lang. A human hand suddenly appeared from out of nowhere and started writing a message on the wall using its fingers. Alam nyo, storyteller din ako. And I would probably have embellished the story with more details to make it more humorous. I would probably, kung ako nagsulat nito, no? I would probably have made the hand appear muna with a golden goblet full of wine, proposing a toast to Belshazzar. And then putting down the golden goblet and dipping its fingers into the wine and using the wine like ink and started writing a message on the plastering of the wall. And what follows is a funny description of the horrified spoiled brat, the son of the tyrant. Listen to how the storyteller describes him. When he saw the wrist, kamay lang eh. Ewan ko ano reaksyon nyo kung makakita kang bigla ng 
putol na kamay. Nagsusulat pa. When he saw the wrist and the hand that wrote on the wall, his face turned very pale. His thoughts terrified him. His hip joints shook and his knees knocked. Tinagalog ko. Sa Tagalog, namutla siya sa sindak. Nanginig ang mga kasukasuan at nangatog ang kanyang mga tuhod. He is being portrayed like a scared little boy. Yesterday, we heard of Nebuchadnezzar, the father, desperately seeking someone who would recall and interpret his dream for him. He was the father who loved to use power and brute force to command obedience, bullying father. The son is not even capable of that. He uses stolen money, the stolen money of his late father, in order to bribe his way around. He even promises the prophet Daniel, gagantimpalaan daw siya, bibigyan daw siya ng maraming ginto. He would give him a fat reward if only he could read and interpret the writings on the wall. Alam nyo, Si Daniel, the prophet before Belshazzar, parang katulad din ni Jesus before Pontius Pilate. We have a prophet who is calm and serene before a very nervous king. And the prophet, inisnab niya ang pera ng hari. Inisnab niya ang pera ng hari. Listen to what the prophet said. Nung binibigyan siya ng pera to read the writings on the wall and to interpret it. Sabi ng propeta, You may keep your gift, sir, but I will read the writing on the wall for you to tell you what it means. And here is how I would paraphrase what the prophet said. You know well that the vessels you are partying with were stolen by your father. They are the sacred temple vessels. And look what you're doing. You're desecrating them with your profligate lifestyle. And you really think nobody remembers? You are wrong. God does not forget. And God wants you to know His message through the writings on the wall. Mene, Tekel, Peres. He is warning you. He is warning you that He will put an end to your tyrannical dynasty. Tutul Dukan ang iyong dynasty. And then, Perez, Tekel, and Perez, you have been weighed and have been found wanting. Familiar ba? You have been weighed and found wanting. You know, kung Pilipino kayo, you should be familiar with that line. Because it was made into a movie by Lino Broca. Tinimbang ka, ngunit kulang. That's a biblical passage. Yun ang binasa natin. You have been weighed and have been found wanting. Tinimbang ka ng Diyos. At sa mata niya ay kulang na kulang ka. I don't think you need a lot of imagination to be able to apply this passage to our present circumstances. 
bahala na kayo. Like Daniel, Jesus in today's gospel sees through the nakedness and the emptiness of the souls of the power wielders and the power brokers. On this day, as announced, we are celebrating the color red. And it should be clear to all of us what red means. What red really means. Because this is the time for the church to honor our martyrs and all the persecuted Christians around the world. On this day, we honor the holy martyrs, courageous martyrs, 117 of them. Vietnamese martyrs of the 19th century. Grabe no? Tayo dalawa pa lang ang santo natin. Ang Vietnam pala mayroon na siyang 117. And they were mostly lay people. With some priests and some bishops. They were canonized by Pope St. John Paul II for the kind of witnessing that they gave for love of their faith and for love of their country, their people. Alam nyo, if we were to come up with a list of all the Christian martyrs who had courageously faced persecution and death, and if we were to write all their names with blood on the walls of this cathedral, this cathedral will not be enough for the hand of God to write all of them. Kahapon, tinext ako ng coordinator ng aming Catholic Biblical Federation in Southeast Asia because some of our members are from Myanmar. And you know, that I have been praying for Myanmar since the time nung nagsimula yung takeover ulit ng military dictatorship. The priest informed us yesterday that many priests were arrested yesterday in Myanmar. They are now in jail and their bishops do not know where they were being incarcerated. This very moment, our Catholic Biblical Federation is holding a meeting. Kung hindi ako kailangan magmisa ngayon, I should be in that prayer meeting. But I told them, I will be thinking of them at the Red Wednesday Mass. So this very moment, our federation in the Catholic Biblical Federation are holding a prayer meeting to encourage the priests who have been arrested and are now incarcerated. And most likely, they are also being tortured. Let us please support them with our prayers. While listening to Father Jerome reading the gospel, I imagined Jesus talking to them and saying to them exactly what he said 2,000 years ago. He said, I myself will give you wisdom in speaking so that all your adversaries will be powerless. You will speak in a manner that your adversaries will be powerless to resist or to refuse. Let us pray for all the persecuted Christians around the world and let us unite ourselves with the holy martyrs of the church who are the foundation of the body of Christ. Let this Red Wednesday be a day of celebrating our witnessing 
as disciples of our Divine Master. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.